Alrighty, so motion on an incline plane. Um, so we're going to be doing kinematics on a ramp. Did we, did we do any ramp stuff today, Lava? I know Mr. Smigelski likes to sneak it in. That, so he might have, for you guys that had physics first semester when I got knocked on the head and he came in, so you guys might have done some ramp. I think I said, why don't you do that? So you might have, this might be kind of a review for some of you. Anyways, all right. So if you imagine, here's a flat surface. I don't, it'd be nice if I could make that bigger. Can I make that bigger? Where's Zoom? Oh, there. Oh, awesome. Oh, didn't really make it any bigger, did it? Yeah. Okay, uh, here's, the, here's the object. What are the green vectors there? Normal force up, gravitational force down, and they are equal, balanced, which is what you would expect. Okay, now can I move this guy? Maybe I can reset. Where's reset? There we go, reset. I want to take the angle right down to zero. Okay, so they are balanced right there. Now notice as I increase the um, angle, what, what happens? Well, it appears that some new forces are being presented, right? Or are coming into play. What's this one straight down like this? Weight force, gravity, straight down. What would this one here sort of be? Is it not the same as, right? There's the normal force. Still the normal force, right? But you'll notice now that the gravitational force and the normal force often are not balanced, right? Like they're not even opposite direction anymore, right? So because they are unbalanced, that means that there now is a net force, which means the object will move, which you're all familiar with because you've all probably put things on ramps and they slide down, right? Why do they slide down ramps? Because there is a net force. Now, what the heck are these sort of just slightly lighter green ones here? Go back, think about components. What are they kind of? They are indeed the horizontal and vertical components of what force? Gravity. Of gravity, right. Of gravity. This is the gravitational force straight down. These are, now when you say horizontal and vertical, they're not really horizontal and vertical, but they kind of are if you think about them in relation to the angle, the, the ramp itself, right? Like this, this one here, you could say is horizontal in the frame of reference of the plane, of the ramp. And Connor's agreeing with me that this one would then be the vertical, right? We're kind of use special names for them in, in sort of a ramp situation. Okay, so I'm sort of giving you all the background stuff there. Now you will notice that here I have zero friction, right? But if I crank up the static friction, what happens? Nothing. How come? Because there's friction, right? So the thing is trying to go down, but it can't. What do you think this green vector is right here? It's friction, but you'll notice that it doesn't exist when, how come it doesn't exist when it's flat? Because it's not really an applied force, it's not trying to move. I mean, there is that, you use the term applied force. What is, which one of those forces is the applied force there? Which one is it? Which green one? It's this one here, right? The one that's down the plane, would you call it, Martin? And that's actually the terminology that I use. Okay, so that's good. We've gone through a lot of stuff there, just kind of without writing anything down, just sort of giving you some background stuff. So if you want to write stuff down, you can. Basically, this is what I'm going to say right here. So we will calculate the force acting on an object resting on an inclined plane, including the normal force, friction force, and the component of the gravitational force. Calculate the components of F gravity exerted on an object resting on an inclined plane. You don't need to write any of that down. That's okay. You'll also notice that, unfortunately, I turned the ramp around, which was kind of silly, right? We'll deal with it. So when an object sits on a flat surface, gravity acts straight downward. That's our FW. And the surface exerts a normal force, Fn. So you've seen this before. And nine times out of ten, they should be balanced, right? So you'd be more than nine times. It would be 110 now, wouldn't it? As long as there's no other um, applied force, right? What happens when the surface is at an angle? What happens when I take this and literally give it a twist? Well, gravity is always going to be 
straight down. And so therefore, you get that imbalance, right? You get that um, net force idea. Oops. Okay, so when an object sits on an inclined plane, gravity acts straight downward. We're still going to call it FW. And the ramp exerts a normal force, Fn. And then down here at the bottom, the quantities Fn and Fg are simply the components of the weight, which I need to explain a little bit more. So I would suggest you draw that picture. Draw a ramp there. And we're going to include these forces. Okay, so you've got your object on your ramp. Now let's just draw down F. W. Did you win, Austin? O for five. What what are the actual F W straight down, but the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, F N, right? The normal force and the weight force are not equal and opposite here. Okay? So if we take this FW, if you think about the whole thing, and I like the way we kind of talked about this before, if you sort of take the whole thing like this, and you think about the components, right? And so they are components of FW that are both parallel and perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. We're going to get these ones, and I'm going to put them in red. I realize you probably don't have that ability, right? But those are the components of FW. Right? Now, don't write this part down. You could, if you want, you could label this FW, I guess that'd be FWY, right? In relation to the plane. And this would be FWX in relation to the plane, right? That's starting to get a little bit confusing. A little bit sort of cumbersome, I think. Okay? So the terminology that we're going to use is this. Okay? This one I'm going to call FD. And Martin said it, F down the plane. D for down. I know it's kind of hokey, it's kind of lame. It's not very scientific, but it's F, D, down the plane. You textbooks might might show it differently. I know Mr. Smigolski likes to do that rotational thing and call it X and Y and stuff. And some books do that. Okay? What are we going to call this one over here? Well, technically, a lot of books call it this, F perpendicular. It's the, it's the component of the gravitational force that is perpendicular to the plane. That's a mouthful. That's a lot to say, right? I'm going to call it, and I'm probably wrong, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to, I call it Fn. Okay? It's, the, it's not really the normal force. It's kind of like the negative normal force, right? It's the reverse of that. This is the actual normal force here, right? But are these, the black one here and this red one here, numerically are they going to be equivalent? They are, right? And in fact, when you go to mu equals FF over FN, we're really talking about this one, but because numerically this one is equal to that one, well, right? Now, is the direction of this different? Yes, this FN is really down into the surface, but does that matter? Are we going to be worrying about the object traveling in that direction? No, right? So just sort of for simplicity's sake, I'm going to call this FN. Bad guy, but we'll be okay. Just to make it a little bit simpler. Okay, so now, going back to some grade 9 trigonometry here, right? And if you want to redraw that little triangle, you can. Or if you want to just do this underneath, that's fine too, right? Oh, I should go back because I didn't talk about this. I want you to think about this angle down here, theta. How is it related to this angle in here? You think, between the blue and the red. Does it feel like they should be related somehow? Opposite? What do you mean by opposite angles? What do you mean, like, opposite direction, I guess? Mark, is that what you mean? I mean, there are certainly different directions, that's true, right? I'm, I'm talking about simply the number. Simply the angle. Do you think they're equal? No? Let's go back to this one here. Okay, let's just go back to my angle. What is the angle of the ramp? Zero. What's the angle in here? Also zero. And as it goes up, right, does this angle equal this angle in here? 
It sure does. Right? In fact, if you think about it going all the way to, it won't let me go. It won't let me go to 90. But if you go all the way to 90, would that not be equal to the right? That'd be the same, wouldn't it? So indeed, yes. Key thing to know: this angle here, the angle of the ramp, is actually equal to that angle in there. Those are the same. Okay. I'm not going to offer a proper geometric proof, but I think you all believe it. Come on, Shay. Give me some more credit. Okay, so from a trigonometric standpoint, FW is down. The FN, is it opposite or is it adjacent? To the angle. Adjacent. And the FD would be? Opposite. So... I couldn't remember which one was first, that's why I did it like that. So we're going to say that sine theta is opposite FD over um, hypotenuse, which is really, right? So in other words, FD is equal to MG sine theta. And that, my friends, is a formula you're going to need. FD is equal to MG sine theta. The force down the plane, the gravitational component, the component of gravity that is down the plane is equal to mass times gravity times the sine of theta in degrees. And likewise, Fn, the component of gravity that is perpendicular to the plane, would be mg cos theta. That's really all the sort of numerically, formula-wise, formula that you need to know from today. And now we just apply that to situation. All good there, Austin? Yeah? Okay. Here's a little question. There's a few little parts here. We're going to do this right away. I'll give you a second to write it down. Alrighty, so we have a 30 degree angle. It's one meter long. 5 kilogram object, and we are asked to find FW, FN, FD, A net, time to get to the bottom and the velocity plot. Normally, pun intended, I wouldn't always sort of ask you A, B, and C. I would just sort of go right to D kind of thing, but I want to make sure that I show you sort of which ones to do. Okay, right, so I need to, fortunately, I can't have everything on my screen all at once here. So we got 30 degrees and 1 meter, right? Okay, so what is the weight force? FW, mass times gravity. Mm, what do we got here? 5 kilograms. Now, should I use minus 9.8? Well, okay, let's talk about this for a second here. If we use negative, the negative implies what? Or it's there to tell us the direction. So it's down. So by doing that, what you are you are defining down to be negative and up to be positive. I mean, they, those don't necessarily have to be the same length. I just talk about the direction. So down, negative, up is positive. But the fact is, this object is not going down. It's not going up. It's in fact going down the ramp. So maybe it would be better to say that down the ramp is negative and up the ramp would be positive. Would that be better? From a because when we get friction in there, we're gonna have one friction is gonna be sort of up the ramp, right? So it's probably better to do that. So maybe and can we assign that straight down to be negative and then this to be negative? Sure, if you want, you can call it a different kind of negative, I guess. If you want, right? But really, do I need this straight down negative direction? No, I don't. That's what I'm getting at here. So really, I mean, you can put the negative there because it's probably forced to have it, but it really doesn't matter. 5 times minus 9.8, I believe, is 49 newtons. Am I right? And now Fn, the normal force, is going to be mg cos theta. That's going to be that mg, so that's going to be now, the my, should I put the, see, this is why I don't like the negative, because really, I only care about the number. So I'm just going to say 49 cos, is it 30 degrees?
42.4. And FD is going to be MG sine theta. 49 times sine 30. Twenty four point five. Everybody with me so far? What do I have to find next? The acceleration and the time to get to the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to redraw this picture here now. So our FD, now here's the other thing too, is we've always drawn it like this up to now, but really, eh, let me just do this. No, I got it in red. Really, this one here, I can move it so that it's there, and quite often, I will, when I'm drawing it, instead of drawing it down here as a component, I will just draw it here. It's the same thing, though. Right? Because it's kind of sh showing that it's down the ramp. So I just did on about a force of habit there, and then I realized that I should explain that. Right? So this one here and that one there are the same. They're not different. Right? How many other forces are acting on it? In the direction of the plane. Well, we do have this normal force, but just like when you've got a flat surface, we don't really worry about it going sideways. So what I'm really trying to tell you is the net force is equal to that FD. That's the only force acting in that up-down ramp sort of reference frame. So in other words, the F net is equal to this value here, 24.5. So in other words, F net is equal to MA. 24.5 is equal to my mass is 5, I think times the acceleration, so we're going to divide by 5. And you, what do you know? You get 4.9 meters per second squared. So the acceleration down the ramp is 4.9 meters per second squared. How do we get the time to get to the bottom? I need, I need a time, right? What else do I know? I think I know that distance is one meter, right? I know the distance. Do I know the vi, the initial velocity? Sure, it'd be zero, right? Do we know the acceleration. Can we solve for time? You betcha. T equals vi t plus one half at squared. So the distance is one. The initial velocity is zero. Now, what direction? What what? What sign should I put on that acceleration? Well, again, it kind of depends on what you want to say. Most people prefer down to be negative, but sometimes it makes more sense if the down is the positive and the up is negative. It doesn't really matter, as long as you have a system that works in that situation, right? Does it matter here what direction, what, what um, sign I put with this acceleration? Not really, because I'm just solving for time, right? Time's not a scalar, or time's not a vector, so... So it's going to be one half of 4.9 t squared. And in fact, with the t squared in there, having a negative might cause some issues. So t is equal to, the zero disappears. I got one half of 4.9, which is 2.45, right? So it's going to be one divided by 2.45, and I have to take the square root of that. Zero point six four. That's not too bad. And what's the last thing? Find the velocity at the bottom. Vf equals vi plus at will work nicely. Zero plus our acceleration of four point nine. Our time of point six four. My fours look like nines.
3.13. Alrighty, so, oh, I should point this out too. I always forget this here until I pop this up on the screen, which is a good thing. Um, on a frictionless surface, which is the one we just dealt with, the net force is equal to Fd, right? There was no friction. So what does that mean sort of in a formula sense? A little quick derivation here. If F net is equal to Fd, and F net is equal to mass times acceleration, and Fd is equal to mg sine theta, what happens? The mass is cancelled, right? The mass is cancelled, and in fact, your acceleration is equal to g sine theta. Only on a frictionless ramp. Only on a frictionless ramp, the acceleration is equal to g sine theta. Stupid handwriting software. Only on our frictionless ramp. Okay, there are some textbook questions. They're fairly challenging. I would suggest you do them in this order. I would suggest you do those handout ones that I just gave to you. That's sort of the beginner starter pack. And I would suggest you pick a couple of two or three of that set there out of the textbook to try as well. So you got a little over a half an hour today. Um,